Hello and welcome to another tune from the Campbell Cantaract. This one is called Graham's March. Uh, its opening vocables are Hindi Ha e Hindi Hyo Din. And that's repeated. Hindi Ha e Hindi Hyo Din. That's how it starts. The name is of interest. It's only known as Graham's March in the Campbell Cantaract. In the other sources, Angus Mackay, John McDougall Gillis, David Quinn, it's given a Gaelic title which has three asterisks in it. An asterisk always raised eyebrows, of course, was something unmentionable meant. The English translation is Drizzle on the Stone. It's been postulated that Graham, whether it was Graham who was Claverhouse or Graham who was Montrose, was much disliked and this title was a disrespectful title um, suggesting that some form of uh, human uh, fluid uh, was um, placed upon a stone in some way or another. Who knows, it's only speculation but it's quite amusing. The tune was also used apparently as a demonstrating tune by one of the Peabrook Society's instructors, John Grant. He was not successful, his students didn't like him and he was quickly sacked. But he apparently used this tune and water falling onto the pavement outside his house to demonstrate how Peabrook worked. Quite interesting that. I actually think that the idea of running water is good for Peabrook. The idea of a water wheel, it's a very sort of continuous sound often. And Maybe John Grant had a point, but he wasn't liked. Anyway, let's get on to the tune. Hindi ha e hindi yodin. These are the cantarax vocables. And I'll say again, I won't necessarily sing the exact vocables. I don't do that. I don't have it memorised enough to do it. Campbell's vocables were devised to be read from the page. Although I'm sure Campbell would have used them himself. It's essentially a simple tune. Two phrases, that opening phrase repeated, and then another phrase. Hio, e hio, e hio, an hio, an And that's all there is to it. Two phrases, second line, eh, phrase one once, phrase two twice, and the third line, phrase one and phrase two once each time. The ground is timed in a two to one ratio of long notes to short notes. So in compound time, and that gives it a more spacious feel. Um, so something like. So, quite relaxed, quite spacious. The first variation played a bit faster, obviously. And Angus Mackay times it in simple time, dot cut. Uh, so a 3 to 1 ratio as opposed to a 2 to 1 ratio. And that's how it is in Piper's Meeting 2. Patrick, when he translated this, wasn't aware that it was an Angus Mackay. And it's interesting that he's come up with the same timing. So, the first variation, just that little bit of brisker and with the kind of dot cut feel rather than the compound time feel. <laughs> then there's a Torler Brebach. In Piper's meeting, it's timed in a fairly standard Prebach Toller form, which we call down nowadays. So on and so forth. However, if you look at all the sources, 
the manuscript sources staff notation, they all are in fact timed in a kind of a round fashion rather than particularly down or particularly up. Uh, so something like this. And that's the way I've decided to time it in the recording I've done of the tune. Then there's a Krunlo Brebach with uh, the standard Krunlo Brebach timing, uh, which really echoes that interpretation of the Torlo, you see. So because the Torlo was... <laughs> And that simply becomes, insert a crunlo instead of a torlo. So you keep a similar kind of rhythm and feel going. It's just all a matter of taste and I thought I would do that just to allow that style to be heard. So, a plain tune about a man who perhaps was... Uh, disliked and a rude title was therefore given in the manuscripts but Campbell gave it the polite title Graham's March. I hope you enjoyed it, thanks for looking in and uh, we hope to see you again. Thank you, bye bye. <laughs>